Joining me now is the Republican Congressman from South Carolina's 1st District, Mark Sanford. Congressman Sanford, thanks for joining me. It is nice to be able to talk about something where there is some bipartisan agreement. Um, what, do, what do you say to folks like in, in your own party, including Marco Rubio, who are not, not in support of this, lifting the embargo? He has called the new Cuba policy a concession to tyranny. Well, I would respectfully submit a couple of different things. I would say, one, it needs to be remembered that it was Ronald Reagan who encouraged Americans to travel to Eastern Bloc countries and to the former Soviet Union as a way of bringing down the, 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 the Iron Curtain. That strategy ultimately proved successful. What we've had in place here is a strategy for 50 years that hadn't worked. So I mean, I think the definition of insanity is continuing to try things that haven't worked. And I think most importantly, this ultimately is not about Cuba. It's not about other countries. It's about American rights. And, you know, our founding fathers promised life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. But a big, you know, right within that basket of rights to go with liberty is the ability to travel, to come and go as you please. And I think, you know, there, of all the different countries in the globe, there's only one that you can't travel to presently, and that's Cuba. You could travel to North Korea. You could travel to Syria. You could travel to Iran. A whole host of countries that I don't think have America's best interest at heart, yet there's no American prohibition presently against traveling to those places. So I think this is only about American liberty, among other things. Do you, I mean, does, does, given Marco Rubio and his roots and his, uh, I think, preeminent voice on issues of immigration, uh, how much concern is there within the party that you may go against what he is publicly advocating for? Well, I, again, I, I, I'm not against him. I don't think Jeff Flake is against him. I think that Jeff Flake and the Senate side, or myself or other colleagues that are joining this bill on the House side, are simply about recognizing the fact that, again, what we, we can't do is be inconsistent as we are right now with regard to an American right, and that is the fundamental of a right of Americans to travel. And, that, you know, unlike the former Soviet Union, where you had to get papers to travel one place to another, why should we allow that impediment on American travel, particularly with a place that's just a number of miles off our coast. It may make sense in the case of national security concerns, which could have existed back in 1963 when this prohibition was put in place, but it doesn't exist today. There are no current accounts out there saying that Cuba is some monstrous national security threat to the United States, and accordingly, I think we ought to be able to travel there. Um. Congressman, I, I got to ask you, you, you mentioned at the top of this, this se segment that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Yesterday, the House voted for the 67th time to repeal or defund the Affordable Care Act. How is that not the definition of insanity? Now we're going far afield from Cuba, uh, uh, but, but what I would say is this, you know, uh, previous attempts, whether you like it or whether you dislike it, uh, had been blocked over on the Senate side, and for the Senate to have a debate, which was quickly squelched, the House needed to send a bill over there. So I think you had a bunch of new freshmen here that hadn't taken a vote on that particular issue, and it was important to them to take a vote based on where they stood back home. It was equally important to send a bill over the Senate so they could or couldn't debate that debate quickly went out the window. Let, let, let me ask you, so you see this more as a sort of rite of passage, the voting to repeal the ACA, and something that is a ne necessary thing for incoming freshmen, yes? I'll let you define it however you like. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me ask you, because we're talking about Cuba, and, and part of the subject of Cuba brings up the issue of immigration, and there is a big fight uh, in, in the House and the Senate to figure out defunding for the Department of Homeland Security. Are you confident that something will be resolved before February 27th? Something's going to get resolved. We don't know exactly what that looks like. And I think that there is a legitimacy. I mean, that's where there's sort of inconsistency from a Republican standpoint on, on, for instance, the Cuba issue. We don't want the president to act unilaterally. He has, for instance, with regard to Cuba. We have a bipartisan bill here, both House and Senate companion bills, that I think address a fundamental right. I think that that's the right way to address it. On, on, on the, the, the issue coming up here in this month with regard to immigration, you know, a lot of people are very upset that the, the, the president took unilateral action. I, I think Congress, as it should, is going to come up with whatever its answer to that might be. Um, but I think that's the proper procedure, which, again, takes me back to the Cuba issue, which is I think we're marching right along the way that I think we're supposed to in saying, okay, here's an idea. Might it need adjustment? Let's take let, 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 Let's line up co-sponsorships on that idea accordingly.
Um, Congressman, I, asked, I have to ask you one more question. It may be slightly farther afield from Cuba, but we have <laughs> been talking about it. You keep going further and further from Cuba, but go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Do I have one last question? We have been talking a lot about Aaron Schock's office and uh, the 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 decor. Is, do you have pheasant feathers in your office? And what do you think about the news about Aaron Schock's Downton-inspired uh, interior design? You know, I think that there's a tendency within the media, with all due respect to you or others in the media, to try somebody before, uh, you know, uh, all the facts are out there. I, I think what we ought to wait and see is all the facts with regard to, you know, w w what he was deciding on or not deciding on and improving his offices. I think every member has, the, you know, the prerogative to dress their office up as they'd like. I, I want to wait and see what the facts are. Aaron's a good guy, and I've really enjoyed getting to know him during the short time I've been back in Congress. Congressman Mark Sanford, thank you for your time. Pleasure. Coming up, a